Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 with Southport. Still in the Premier League, it is now the 16th of October and things are kind of going as we expected. We're doing alright, we're winning games, we're losing games, we're a mid-table side. So we have played in total five matches, four of them in the league, one of them in the Carabao Cup. In the league, we've beaten Leicester 2-1, Damian Tilger with two goals in that one, against Arsenal, a 1-0 defeat, against Brighton, a 1-0 defeat in the Carabao Cup, which we're not too fussed about, and then a 3-0 defeat against Watford. We do this sometimes. We just absolutely implode against middle-of-the-table sides. I don't really know why or how, but we do it. We need to try and work out on that one. And then against Crystal Palace, a 4-2 victory here. Keith Hall, Damian Tilger, Sebastian Mendes and Amiro Butic, 90th minute penalty. So we are currently sat 9th place in the table, which I think is reasonable. We're nowhere near the relegation zone. We're actually a lot closer to Champions League football, but I think come the end of the season, we're going to be 11th. That's my guess. We're going to be finishing about 11th place. Today then, we are going to be playing Brighton and Hove Albion, and we probably play... Let's play West Ham, I think. Let's play West Ham. Let's play a first match on camera in our brand new stadium, because I realise we haven't actually done that yet. By the way, we've sold out every single match that we've played there. So, uh, I mean, apart from the Chesterfield game, but that's Chesterfield. We need a bigger stadium. I've already asked them for one, which I think I did in the last episode, so maybe next season. A quick bit of transfer news as well before we get into the Brighton game. Daniel Labilla has left the club signing for French side Toulouse for £275,000. It's not a bad bit of money for a player who didn't really play for us. Salvadoran central defender Mauricio Arellana has also left the club signing for Wrexham down in League One. They have spent £89,000 on him. It's not a lot of money. He was out of contract at the end of the season and basically we weren't going to renew it, were we? He technically at the time of selling him, was our club captain. He was club captain from that season there, the season after he stopped playing. So, uh, yeah, orellana has gone. And finally, Joel Tabue, the Ivorian central defender, who I think might actually be half French as well. He is half French. He has gone out on loan to Africa Sports in the Ivory Coast. He's not going to get football for us, but if he can get a season under his belt playing in, in uh, Ivory Coast, then that'll be good for him. I think Joel Tabue is going to be a good player in the future. Just needs to get some football under his belt early on. Brighton then, a team that we have played three times so far in this save, two of them last season, one so far this season in which we lost to them in the Carabao Cup, hopefully we can avenge the Carabao Cup defeat, we have never even drawn with them, which doesn't sound good does it when it's a team like Brighton, no offence to Brighton fans, but they're a team that you'd think if you're going to take points from anybody, Brighton's one of those sides, maybe they're just better, maybe that's what's just happened. It's matching formations then for Brighton and Southport. We are starting with Varro in goal. Javier Leal, Sebastian Mendes, Dramain Bamba and Luke Matheson will be our back four. Hargreaves, Doyle and Butic in the middle of the pitch. Holovko, Murray and Tilga as our strikers on the bench. We do have Ezio Spadero. I'm giving Leal a game as a left back. I don't really know what position Leal should be. Um, he's a very good central defender who can't head her because he's five for eight. I want him to be a deep-lying playmaker on defend, but he can't pass. I think he's really good. He's got a lot about him, but I just don't know where to play him. So he's going to get a chance as a left-back today. We've also got on the bench Alsane Konate and Melkonian. Melkonian has returned from his injury. He hasn't played. I think he might have played for the under-23s, actually. But yes, he has returned, and looking at him now, he's not as good as what he was before, was he? So uh, he's has he played for the under-23s? He did. He played... 58 minutes for the under-23s not that long ago. And apparently two matches for Armenia. Okay, cool. Thanks for that, Armenia manager. But we're off the back of a 4-2 victory against Crystal Palace, so hopefully we can keep the momentum going. Leal's throw to Damian Tilger, the Argentine striker. McNamee steals the ball away. There are four Southport players chasing that ball around like we're 10-year-olds. Latour can run into some space, goes for a long-range effort, hits Bamba. He can get the ball clear as well. Aaron's to Skopalniak, possibly. Sunjik back to Skopalniak. That's not his name, is it? There's definitely more letters in there. Aaron's forward to Damsgaard on the left. On the ground, finds McAllister in the penalty area. Back to Sunjik. Sunjik with some space. Kanitaro. Sunjik once again. We need to steal this away. Brighton are making us look stupid. There we go. Rock Murray has the ball. Long ball towards Tilga. Holovko gets the intercepted header. Runs towards goal himself. He's been tackled. It's a great tackle. That surely has to be a pass back. If that was a tackle, that's a pass back. Seconds later, another highlight, possibly starting with the ball with the goalkeeper. So, 
Brighton building up from the back. It's Rolando. That is Rolando Arons, isn't it? Playing as a left back. If it isn't, I'm not sure who that's going to be. It's Max Arons. That makes a lot more sense because he's a fullback. McNamee gets past his man into the penalty area. Two defenders foul him. I'm not really sure what's just happened there. It's going to be a penalty. Mendes is the one being penalised. Come on, Varro. Come on, Varro. We give away far too many penalties and free kicks and sendings off and all sorts of jazz. But 1-0 down against Brighton. Alexis McAllister. We are bang average. We are bang average. Throw for Southport. Matheson to Dramain Bamba. Forward finds Hargreaves. Southampton have taken the lead against Brentford. Not that that means anything. Tilga's going to get on the end of Doyle's pass into the penalty area. Tilka goes for the opposite corner. Hits it wide of the post. Right, we need to give him a talk. Give him a talk. Let's give him a get creative. See if that does anything. Martinez for Everton. Everton? Who? I just saw Everton turn up in the top left-hand corner. It's Brighton. It's definitely Brighton. Max Aaron's left-hand side runs into the penalty area, goes past Matheson, and it's a corner. That was some questionable defending. McNamee's corner has come in towards the back. Hargreaves just smashes the ball upfield. Rourke Murray has it. He's been tackled by Ferguson. That is a great tackle, because if Murray was gone, Murray would have definitely missed. Well, things have calmed down a bit now, which I don't know whether there's a good thing or a bad thing. We've had three shots, not a single one on target at the moment. Our strikers are not turning up for this game, and it's going to be a defeat against Brighton. I know we're not even at half-time yet, but our strikers just aren't here, are they? It's 1-0 at half-time. The McAllister penalty is the only goal that separates us. We've actually had some shots on target, apparently. So uh, that's a good thing. We didn't see any of them. You're getting an angry. That wasn't good. That was not good. You're getting an angry shout. All of our defender, defender strikers are playing badly. Matheson's having a shocker as well. So uh, Matheson off for Daniel Acuna. He is not a right back, but we're going to try him there anyway. We're going to do Malconian on for Tilga. Let's give Malconian a chance. He's he's done all right in the games that he has played last season. Maybe he can pick up where he left off. The corner's come in. It's gone over everybody. Holovko, the Ukrainian. He's got the ball, but he's got some company in front of him. Gets past his man. Keeps going. Can he get his cross away? He does. Melkonyan's there. He's been on the pitch for four minutes, and Rafik Melkonyan has his first goal of the season. That goal has to be credited, or doesn't have to be credited, but Holovko did so much work to get the ball into the penalty area here. It was easy for Melkonyan. Lovely little header just in front of the defender and the goalkeeper. 1-1. One, one. Right, we can get back in this. Butic has a corner for us. 54 minutes, just 10 minutes after the goal. It's 2-0. It's 2-0. It's 2-1. Sebastian Mendes, of course. It is Sebastian Mendes. His third goal of the season. He loves a goal. He loves a goal, Sebastian Mendes. He gets five goals a season for us. We are up to seventh place. We're 2-1 up against Brighton. The second half. We have just come out all guns blazing, haven't we? We have come out all guns blazing. I'm thinking we're going to do our final sub very soon. It's a throw for Acuna. Malconian back to the Mexican. Crosses the ball in. Doesn't find anybody. Butic with a bit of control. Back to Hargreaves. Now Doyle passing it around but having to go backwards instead. Bamba to Mendes. The goal scorer. Doyle. He's got a runner. Doesn't use yet Liao. Instead Acuna to Holovko in the penalty area. It's not the best of efforts from the Ukrainian. Right. We're going to do Butic off. Not that he's having a bad game. He's just tired. We're going to do Kanate on... As I mentioned, I think, in the last episode, Kanate is a player who is starting to break into the first team. Not that he's good enough, but I want him to get better. There is a free kick for Brighton towards the middle. Mendes heads clear. Doyle gets it clear further. And now Kanate can possibly break. It's three on two. Rourke Murray finds Malkonian. Is he going to get his second of the match? Malkonian in on goal. Wonderful slide tackle by Sunjik. Lovko is going to keep it in play for no apparent reason because he could have won a corner. Six minutes of normal time to play. Williams' throw finds Latour. Back to Williams. Brandon Williams tries to cross in. Takes a wicked deflection. And Max Ahrens is in on goal. And Max Ahrens has got extremely lucky there. Equalising for Brighton with six minutes to play. That deflection. That deflection from the Williams cross. Basically just ruined absolutely everything. Look at what happens here. So Williams has the ball. Kicks it in. And it's it was you. It was you. Who are you? Canate. It just dislodges everything. That's not the word I wanted to use, but that's what word I'm going to use. We're 2-2. Two, two. Give him a get creative. There is still time. Three minutes to play. Bamba to Mendes. Forward to Hargreaves. Across. Now Canate, who I'm, I'm blaming for the goal, even though it wasn't really his fault. Hargreaves and Canate getting the ball between each other once again. Holovko. He's got Malkonyan making a run. Across to Doyle. Doyle back to Holovko. Into the penalty area. Malkonyan is there. And Rafik Malkonyan gets his second of the game. It is 3-2 against Brighton. We are definitely going to shut up shop now because I don't want to concede another one.
There's a highlight straight after the goal. That's never a good sign, is it? Brighton do have the ball. Farmy runs down the right. He's got three Southport players in front of him. Canitano back to Sunjic. Lumps it over the top. It's controlled wonderfully in the penalty area. Varro makes a very comfortable save. Drops the ball because apparently he was offside. We've got five minutes of injury time. Why is there five minutes of injury time? What's possibly happened to cause five minutes of injury time? Farmy with a free kick. It's a headed effort. It's dinked the top of the bar. If that went in, I would have been extremely annoyed because there is no reason for five minutes of injury time. The full-time whistle goes. What a second-half performance that was. What an absolutely wonderful second-half performance that was. Rafik Malconian with two. Mendes as well on the score sheet. It's three more points on the road against Brighton. And with nine games played, we are up into a Europa League spot. 16 points on the board, 7th place, just behind Chelsea and Arsenal. This is not going to last this long. Spurs, for some reason, down in 15th. Spurs are 15th. What have they done? They are just losing money. Losing money, losing points. And money, I guess, probably. But yeah, they're, they're just doing bad. If they had a bad start, they must have just had some difficult sides. Yeah, they seem to be dropping points against... Sides that they really should be dropping points against. Like Chelsea, you'd expect. Liverpool, Man City, obviously good sides. But drawing with Fulham, drawing with Palace, drawing with Everton is not good. Anyway, we're not Spurs. Why am I talking about Spurs for? We're going to go forward a long way now. Going to go to the West Ham game at the end of November. So we are flying through the season. Because if I'm not mistaken, we're just on episode two, aren't we? Welcome back. We are now at the end of November. We have played a lot more matches and we are still doing pretty good. One thing though, we can't keep a clean sheet. We've played 13 matches and I think we've kept like two all season. So we've played four further matches in between. We've started off with a 1-1 draw against Tottenham. We really should have won this game. Pablo Mafio's equalising goal was a counter-attack. We were the better side throughout the entire game, could only score one goal. Damian Tilger with the goal against Fulham. Tilger once again and Alsane Canate with the goals in very quick succession. We didn't deserve to win this game and somehow managed to get away with it. We also got Javier Leal sent off. Then against Chelsea, our first and only defeat in between matches was 2-1. Frank Kessie, it shouldn't have been a penalty. It really shouldn't. It was one of those ones where the player was already on the floor... And then somebody ran into the player on the floor and fell over them. It, I think, is probably just a match engine glitch. We did score through Daniel Acuna, but then conceded almost immediately afterwards through Fan Federico Chiesa. And then the match that I have just played, West Bromwich Albion, Rafik Malkonyan and Eugene Holovko with the goals here, giving us a 2-1 victory, putting us up to sixth place in the table. We are still flying extremely high, extremely high, and I don't really know why we're doing it. Kind of glad we are, but also I don't want to be up this high this soon. Match number two then of the episode, West Ham United, who find themselves down in 17th place. So this really should be a victory for us. This is a team who are struggling. We're a team who are actually on very good form considering how bad we were last season. We are even favourites to beat West Ham. That hasn't happened in a long time. Also, it's going to be the first match on camera in our brand new and shiny Southport Stadium which doesn't look like a brand new and shiny stadium at all. The starting lineup then will be Varro in goal, Lewis Gordon, Sebastian Mendes, Daniel Acuna and Nenad Milosevic as the back four. Hargreaves, Kanate and Doyle in the middle of the pitch with Tilga, Murray and Mel Konyan as our strikers. And you can just about see in the background there our stadium kind of flicking by. It, do it doesn't look like a brand new stadium, does it? We spent, well, we've got 15,000 capacity or 14,000 and a bit capacity and we haven't even filled in the corners. We haven't even filled in the corners. Why haven't we filled in the corners? So hopefully against West Ham, we can just keep doing what we've been doing. Winning games. I mean, the one reason why we're doing 12 is we are winning a fair amount of games. We're also losing a fair amount of games. We have lost four of our last 14 matches. We don't draw. We don't seem to draw very much at all. We have the ball early on in the match. Ten minutes on the clock. Acuna can run forward. Finds Milosevic back to Daniel Acuna. Then add Milosevic to Alsane Kanate through ball. Melkonyan's going to use his pace. Gets on the end of it. His effort is somehow in the back of the net. But it went wide. Got a free kick, possibly. Not quite sure where. Okay, it is going to be a free kick. Who's taken it? It's Damian Tilger. The Argentine goes for a curling effort. Straight into the keeper's hands. But Mel Konyan is there to mop up the pieces. His fourth goal of the season. Since he has returned from his injury, he has been on fire. 
absolutely on fire. This could be three more points in the bag. Pavon's free kick for West Ham towards the back post. Fornals doesn't get there. Piccoli, who we tried to sign when we got promoted to the Premier League, and now he might be getting relegated to the Championship for the struggling West Ham side, although we are in November. Pavon to Madvienko. Back to Ferreira. Forward Jovic is there, but Varro also comes out. Comfortably claims the ball. Our wonder kid goalkeeper, by the way. Acuna, forward to Milosevic. Needs to go down that right-hand side or backwards. Acuna does get it. There's some options in the middle. If we can just find our way across to that left-hand side, Doyle is the option that I was thinking of. Canate, forward please, forward please, or run through the ref and back to Hargreaves. We're making making some waves, making some space. Milosevic, through ball to Tilger into the penalty area. Needs to play it backwards. He doesn't manage to get his kick away. Instead, we win ourselves a corner. Doyle's corner comes in. Milosevic is there. It wasn't Milosevic, it was Mendes. Of course it was Mendes. It's always Mendes. It's gone over everybody, though. Another chance, though. Is it Mendes this time? It isn't. It's a header clear. Now Kana can smash it upfield. Pavon, lovely control. It's two on one. Varro makes a questionable save. Hargreaves, what are you doing, buddy? <laughs> just casually passes it back to Varro. Forward to Mendes. Are we going to just actually counter-attack? We're not. Okay. We are looking very good. We are looking very good this season. I was kind of expecting this, but not this well. I was expecting us to start, like beating the lower half sides, struggling against the top half sides. But we're, we're doing all right against some of the top half sides as well. Tilka doesn't win his header. Milosevic does have the ball. Hargreaves, Milosevic has made another run. Doyle to Tilga, making some space for himself. Is he going to pull the trigger instead? Finds Gordon and Lewis Gordon, of all players, has put it into the far corner. It's 2-0 against West Ham. Man City are 5-0 up against Brentford after 35 minutes. This team is starting to look like a good team, like a really good team. Acuna has the ball, lumps it upfield. Big, big kick from the Mexican. Finds Damian Tilger. The Argentine tries to place it. He should have blasted it. Instead, Dalberg holds on to the effort quite comfortably. And at halftime, we're 2 0 up against West Ham. Looking very good. Looking unlikely we're going to be losing this game. We've done no changes. I don't see the point in changing it when we're doing so well. I will probably be looking at bringing on Holovko because I like Holovko. I want to play Gomez as well, although he doesn't get in the side now. Mel Konyan is back. Canate's nicked the ball away. We're 10 minutes into the second half. Has to go backwards, though. Hargreaves forward to Doyle. We've got some space on the right-hand side. Tilka's going to hopefully get on the end of that. Instead, it's back to the keeper. And now West Ham lumping upfield, but we've got the ball once again. Our central defenders are in their half. This is how high we press. We are inside their half. Acuna to Hargreaves to Canate. Dinks it over the top. Can't find Malconian. And now West Ham can just smash the ball upfield. Jovic was onside because I think Gordon was well out of position. Varro makes a very good save. Saving Lewis Gordon. One of our goal scorers, but saving Lewis Gordon a bit of embarrassment. Pavon with the corner for West Ham. Towards the back post. Milosevic heads down. Kana goes for an effort. Hits it wide of the post. 2-0 to Southport. Think we might be doing a change in after this highlight. Sure, we'll do it after the highlight. West Ham have the ball. Saliba back to Dalberg in goal. Malconyan's closing him down but can't get there quick enough. Pavon has a player on their right-hand side. It is Edmondson. Back to Pavon once again. Edmondson's keeping him on his run. He's going backwards instead, though. We're putting on so much pressure. So, so much pressure. The pitch is so small. When we like, This is what we seem to do. We make the pitch so small that they just struggle to do anything. It's a poor header clear from Mendes. Pavon's into the penalty area. Can he cross it in? He tries to cross it in. It hits Gordon. It doesn't hit Gordon. It was just a terrible cross. It's another highlight. We won't do a sub then. Fine. Varro to Acuna. Acuna's got an option on the right. Plays to Canate. Now Doyle. We love a bit of passing, don't we? Absolutely love a bit of passing. Tilga back to Hargreaves. To Canate. To Doyle. Centre circle ball. Finds Milosevic. Great run from the fullback. He's only got Melkonyan in the middle. Tilga has it. Melkonyan's still there if he wants to find him. Can't manage to get him first time. Tilga now into the area. He's been tackled. Wonderful tackle that is from Ferreira. Pizarro to Vlad Dragomir. And West Ham clear the ball upfield. And the highlight does finally end. And now we can do our sub. We're going to do Tilga off for Holovko. I don't know whether that's a good idea. Tilga seems to be playing well, but not as well as Rourke Murray and Mel Konyan, apparently. We also will be doing big dids coming on for Acuna. I realise it's not big dids. This is this is is not big dids at all. So, I need to kind of give you a little bit of a backstory of what big dids is now, don't I? Big dids was a player called Didier Bamba, who I had for my Newcastle side, who was a central defender from the Ivory Coast, who actually wasn't that big, which is why I called this man Big Dids. It's Big Bamba. 
Dramain Bamba. He is big though. He's six foot seven and a wonder kid. Corner for Doyle. Just seconds after the substitutions have taken place, Canate is there. Can't manage to get the ball in the back of the net. Saliba of all players blocking it. Pizarro can now run free for West Ham down the left hand side. We're getting players back though. Rock Murray. Tactical foul there from Rock Murray. Not even getting booked. Good job. 11 minutes left to play. Murray with the ball to Doyle. Back to Gordon. Crosses in. Can't find a yellow Southport shirt. And once again, West Ham breaking down the left-hand side. Mendes heads forward to Rock Murray. Well, yeah, Murray's on a high rating, but I haven't actually seen him do anything. Holovko with it. Gets past his man. The Ukrainian goes for a placed effort and instead hits it just wide of the post. We've got one more sub to do, and I think we are going to do it. We're going to do Malkonian off. We're going to do Victor Gomez on... Like I said, I want to give Gomez some games because he's very good at football. The problem is Melconian scores goals and plays really well. Here is Gomez, the Spaniard, with the ball. Plays it across. Finds Rourke Murray on the left. Plenty of yellow shirts in the middle. Hargreaves is there. He's rattled the post and Gomez was not paying enough attention to get the rebound. We are going to see the throw. So Gordon with it to Hargreaves, who did have that effort. Finds Kanate to Holovko Kanate. Once again, he scored quite a few long-range efforts, Kanate has. But that time was not one of his best. Three minutes of injury time and 30 seconds of normal time to play. And once again, a poor kick out from the keeper. Gomez to Nenad Milosevic. He's running direct towards goal. Is he going to shoot himself? He's still got the ball. Finds Holovko. Across to Kanate. And Alsane Kanate gets his fourth goal of the season. It's 3-0 against West Ham. Who's this? Someone's died. Ferreira's died. I think he's injured. Okay, he's not dead. I'm now interested to see what happened with Ferreira. Like what, did, what did he do? He just went down and just, just stayed there. Okay, he didn't just stay there. Fair enough, he kind of rolled around. We also scored a goal, obviously. That was a pretty good performance. That was a pretty good performance. 3-0 at home against West Ham in front of our brand new stadium. In front of the stadium? In the stadium. In front of 14,155 fans. It's a very good performance. First match in our new ground on camera as well. I'm happy with that. I think we're still in the Europa League spot. We are still in a Europa League spot, 6th place in the table, just one point behind 4th place Manchester United. One point, and we will be in a Champions League spot, although our goal difference isn't very good. Two points, and we would be in a Champions League spot. If we just beat Spurs, when we should have beaten Spurs, we would be sat 4th place in the table now. That's just surreal. Also, what happened here? Leicester beating Wolves 5-4. That would have been a great and exciting match. I mean, look at the amount of goals that were scored. You'd hate to be a Man United and West Brom fan. Well, that's going to do it for this episode. Next episode, where are we going to go? We are probably going to do something like a Liverpool. No, we'll do Brentford and Watford. That's what we're going to do. So we're not going to go very far in this one because I don't want to basically have an episode that kind of straddles the January transfer window. So yeah, we'll do Brentford. We'll do Watford. Again, two matches that I think we should probably win. So we're going to play Southampton and Liverpool, Manchester United and Sheffield United off camera. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Football Manager 2020 with Southport. A rather successful episode, if I do say so myself. If you did enjoy, do please remember to leave a like. If you're new here and you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. I will be back next time with more Football Manager with Southport. And maybe we're still in the hunt for a Champions League spot. We really shouldn't be, but maybe we will be.